Coming in at number 10, Brendan Fraser. With a few upcoming movie roles, it appears like Brendan Fraser is indeed back at it in an era that is being dubbed the Renaissance. Many people really enjoyed watching him in the DC series Doom Patrol, but they're also going to get to see him in big projects like Martin Scorsese's Apple TV film called Killers of the Flower Moon. He will be starring alongside the likes of Leonardo DiCaprio and Robert De Niro. Back in 2018, Fraser briefly spoke about these several events in his personal life that kept him out of Hollywood. While speaking with GQ, he said that he had changed houses, went through a divorce, plus he just wanted to spend more time with his kids, and he revealed the physical toll that his career had taken on him over the years. By the time that he had finished his third Mummy film in China, he said that he was basically being held together with tape and ice, which meant that he would spend seven years in and out of the hospital due to the injuries he sustained from doing his own stunts. But with all of that behind him, we are so happy to see that Brendan is back and better than ever. But before we get into our next point, make sure you tap that like button to show some love to the channel. Coming to number 9, Jessica Simpson. Jessica Simpson recently celebrated four years sober, and in doing so, she showed off a candid photo that even she believes is an unrecognizable version of herself. The photo was from Simpson's first day without alcohol, and in her caption, she spoke more about how she felt that day and what made her want to become sober. She begins by saying, This morning in the early morning of November 1st, 2017 is an unrecognizable version of myself. I had so much self-discovery to unlock and explore. I knew in this very moment I would allow myself to take back my light, show victory over my internal battle of self-respect, and brave this world with piercing clarity. Personally, to do this, I needed to stop drinking alcohol because it kept my mind and heart circling in the same direction and quite honestly, I was exhausted. I wanted to feel the pain so that I could carry it like a badge of honor. And it's certainly great to see that she is now doing much better. For her kids' sake, I would say making this lifestyle change was probably the best decision she could have ever made. Coming in number eight, Zac Efron. When Zac Efron appeared on a Facebook video for Bill Nye's Earth Day musical, his cheeks seemed to be extremely swollen and his jaw was much more prominent. Viewers immediately began speculating as to whether or not he had received some type of plastic surgery. A dermatologist even told Insider.com that Efron could have gotten fillers or facial implants. Interestingly enough though, Zach didn't actually have to deny the rumors himself. An Australian radio show host and friend of his came out publicly to deny the plastic surgery rumors. On the Kyle and Jackie O show, he said that there was no chance the actor had gone under the knife. I would have known if he had any plastic surgery, he said, adding that Efron's face is already close to perfect. It's like getting a Picasso and having a kid finger paint all over it. Why bother? Coming at number 7, Kelly McGillis. Back in 1986, Kelly was the beautiful lady opposite Tom Cruise in the action movie Top Gun. However, now the 64-year-old is said to not be reprising her role as contractor Charlie Blackwood in the new sequel. In 2019, she told Entertainment Tonight that she was never actually contacted to come back for the upcoming installment, but she believes that it's because she looks unrecognizable now. They did not and nor do I think they would ever. I mean, I'm old and I'm fat and I look age appropriate for what my age is. I'd much rather feel absolutely secure in my skin and who and what I am at my age as opposed to placing a value and all that other stuff. Coming at number six, Lara Flynn Boyle. In the late 1980s all the way into the early 2000s, Lara Flynn Boyle was often featured in the tabloids. The Twin Peaks star even covered Rolling Stone and was in a high profile romance with Jack Nicholson, although now she is rarely spotted out in public and when she was, it sparked massive rumors. In a rare red carpet appearance in 2017, it appeared as though she may have indulged a little too much in cosmetic procedures. Just last year, she did an interview with The Hollywood Reporter and revealed that she doesn't even own a computer, smartphone, or know how to use Google, adding that she doesn't even pay attention to what what is written about her in the media. And when asked if she was planning on staging a comeback, the star quipped that she never went anywhere. I guess that would negate the need for a comeback then. Tell me number five, Adele. Adele in 2022 looks very different from the Adele that we were first introduced to. Back in early 2020, Adele revealed that she had lost a ton of weight. In fact, she lost 100 pounds after exercising for two years straight. During a Vogue cover story that she did, she talked about how her body has been objectified for her entire career. Adele also added how she was shocked by the amount of women that were having the most brutal conversations about her dramatic weight loss. She goes on to say, I understand why some women especially were hurt. Visually, I represented a lot of women, but I'm still the same person. And the worst part of the whole thing was that the most brutal conversations were being had by other women about my body. I was very disappointed with that. That hurt my feelings. Despite all of this backlash, though, for her transformation, Adele seems to be embracing her new look. In number four, Wendy Williams. Unfortunately, it looks like the Wendy Williams show is officially going to be canceled in June. Producers cited that with Wendy's ongoing health battle, it has made production very difficult to continue. For a while, they were having a rotation of guest hosts, but they did confirm that Sherry Shepard will be replacing Williams. The producer of the Wendy Williams show and Sherry Shepard's new show called Sherry confirmed that the replacement will take place this fall. 
Sherry will be inheriting the time slots on the Fox-owned and operated stations that have truly been the foundation for Wendy's level of national syndication since 2008. Wendy has battled with the autoimmune disorder Graves' disease for a long time, and recently some health issues connected to that caused her to need time off. Company co-president Mort Marcus and Ira Bernstein said in a statement, since Wendy is still not available to host the show as she continues on her road to recovery, we believe it is best for our fans, stations, and advertising partners to start making this transition now. They continue by saying that they hope that they can work with Wendy again in the future and still wish her a speedy and full recovery. They also express that they still have a great love and affinity for Wendy and admiration for her success. Coming in number 3, Mickey Rourke. Mickey Rourke has had such an interesting career. After he became well known in the 1980s as a Hollywood tough guy and symbol of masculinity, Mickey's career kept being overshadowed by his personal life. By 1991, he had quit acting and started a career of boxing, although this career was not as kind to him. He had gone undefeated in eight fights with six wins, four of which were knockouts, but the damage he took from these fights was horrendous. He's broken his nose, toe, and ribs, plus had a compressed cheekbone and split his tongue. Because of this, he would require plastic surgery, but Mickey would later say that he chose the wrong person to do it because the surgeon had left his face a complete mess. Fortunately, this actually ended up working in his favor. After being cast as a menacing and bruising character of Marv in Sin City, his career was launched yet again. Plus, he gave the performance of a lifetime in the 2008 film The Wrestler and ended up being part of the MCU in the Iron Man franchise. Not too bad for somebody that looks completely unrecognizable in 2022. Coming in number two, Bridget Fonda. Bridget Fonda quit Hollywood in 2002 and has not been spotted on a red carpet since 2010. So when she was photographed out in public for the first time in more than a decade, it caused big headlines. The former actress looked unrecognizable as she ran errands in Los Angeles. She was once known as one of the most glamorous women in the 1990s, but has proven that all stars go through changes over the years. Her current laid-back look sparked a lot of debate, with many comparing her to how she looked in the 1992 film called Single White Female, a movie that proved she could draw in big numbers as it would go on to make nearly $50 million upon release. Ultimately, though, the pressure of being Hollywood's it girl finally got to her, and so she decided that she was going to retire to focus on starting a family. Last but certainly not least in our number one spot, Linda Evangelista. Recently, supermodel Linda Evangelista stepped back into the public eye after spending the last five years of her life in hiding. During an exclusive interview with People Magazine, Linda opened up about having a cosmetic procedure that she says left her brutally disfigured. Linda was once one of the most photographed people in the world, but she has been hiding out until she was ready to share her story. The model spoke about the emotional and physical pain that has consumed her life after she claims cool sculpting left her permanently disfigured. She tells People Magazine, I love being up on the catwalk. Now I dread running into someone I know. I can't live like this anymore, in hiding, in shame. I just couldn't live in this pain any longer. I'm willing to finally speak. Now, this is a stark contrast from the Linda Evangelista that the world came to know 30 years ago. She wasn't just a model, she was a supermodel. She graced the cover of about 700 magazines in her career and was amused for some of the fashion industry's top creators. Her story now, though, is more about getting back that sense of self and questioning why she felt the need to do these things to her body in the first place. Coming in number 10, 50 Cent. When 50 Cent made his surprise appearance at the 2022 Super Bowl halftime show in Los Angeles, the way he was hanging upside down opened him up to a whole new level of mockery. Immediately, the memes started flowing across social media, all fat shaming 50 Cent. In the performance, he recreated parts of his music video from the 2003 hit Into Club, but he wore a tank top instead of being shirtless like in the original. In response to the outpouring of people saying that 50 looked unrecognizable now, he posted a picture of him and Eminem backstage and captioned it with, I call this teasing me, they're just teasing me because they know I can drop the weight. That's why I laugh with them. Fat shaming only applies when you're ashamed of your fat. But before we get into our next point, make sure you tap that like button to show some love to the channel. Coming in number 9, Kathleen Turner. In 1992, Kathleen gave up a stellar movie career when she was diagnosed with a form of crippling arthritis and told by one doctor that she may never walk again. When the ravaging effects of rheumatoid arthritis, a chronic inflammatory disorder that affects the joints, and the the drugs used to control it caused her to bloat and gain weight, her looks were the last thing on her mind. All she was concerned about was surviving. When making her return to the remake of Dumb and Dumber in 2014, people were worried that she would actually be upset with the script. In one part of the script, Jim and Jeff meet this woman and she says, I'm Frida. And they say, no, Frida's hot. Frida's smoking. That's not you. In response, she said, Do you know what? I don't look like I did 30 years ago. Get over it. People were very cool and accused her of being a drunk. At the time, she wasn't, but she admitted that she later found that vodka helped numb the pain. In 2008, she said in her autobiography that she started using alcohol as pain relief because the drugs were messing up her mind, but it soon spiraled out of control. A few years ago, she decided to change her life and admitted that she had entered a destructive circle in which she became entangled. With the help of friends and family, she's now feeling much better. In at number eight, Matt LeBlanc. Recently, Matt was spotted looking unrecognizable 
Well, as he sported some stubble and baggy sweatpants. The actor who played Joey Tribbiani on the hit show Friends is not often seen out in public, but was caught by the paparazzi at a body shop in Sherman Oaks, California. This rare sighting of Matt LeBlanc also comes after many fans expressed concern for his co-star and friend Matthew Perry, but we'll get to him in a moment though. Matt LeBlanc was widely credited as being the heartthrob of the Friends cast, and now in his older years it seems as though he's not troubled by the level of vanity that his iconic character was held to, letting his hair go gray and rocking a dad bod with no problem. His confidence and humor is truly what made the character of Joey great, and the good thing about that is Matt's confidence and humor is still very much intact. In at number 7, Meg Ryan. Meg Ryan began her acting career in 1981 with minor roles before she joined the cast of the CBS soap opera called As the World Turns the following year. After that, she began to appear in a variety of supporting roles throughout the 1980s in big box office films such as Top Gun and When Harry Met Sally. By 1989, Meg Ryan had gained widespread attention from receiving her first Golden Globe nomination, which established her as an internationally known actor. When it came to romantic comedy flicks, everyone wanted to cast Meg. She was by far one of the most successful actresses in the 90s and early 2000s because of this. That being said, Meg Ryan suddenly disappeared from Hollywood after a single role as a school teacher in a racy R-rated film ended her career. Meg thinks that because people had pigeonholed her as this comedic and lighthearted actress, they were almost appalled watching her act in anything that wasn't that good girl archetype. She was shocked at the vicious reaction she received for being naked in one of the scenes, and thus being in the public eye suddenly made her feel more isolated. In 2015, she turned heads as she attended an event in Paris, marking her first public appearance in 14 months. Many were shocked to see that her nose also looked remarkably different, and she seemed to have a strained appearance around her eyes, resulting in more and more people to remark that she looked unrecognizable now. In at number 6, John Travolta. John Travolta became a household name through his films like Grease and Pulp Fiction, and sported some of the most iconic and cult classic hairstyles. However, in a more recent Instagram post, the actor looked unrecognizable. In an Instagram video and caption, John thanks everyone for wishing him a happy birthday as he awaits his guests for dinner. When people think about John Travolta, though, so many people immediately go back to those signature hairstyles, which is probably why it seems so jarring to see him completely bald. He does sort of look like he's about to audition for Professor X or maybe Mr. Clean the Movie, although I have to say that it doesn't look all that bad. However, some people still do not know how to feel about it. One user writes, I can't believe John Travolta is bald now and also 69 next year, but also bald. And in at number 5, Heather Locklear. Throughout the 1990s, Heather Locklear was a huge star in Hollywood. She probably couldn't even walk down the street without getting recognized. Unfortunately, the bigger the star, the bigger the supernova. Throughout the last decade and a half, her health has been deteriorating, and due to the medication that she was on, Locklear became pretty unstable. In 2018, she had two confrontations with the police that led to her pleading no contest to misdemeanor charges. Police were called to the actor's home, but when they arrived, she actually attacked an officer. As a result, she was taken away for evaluation instead of being given any jail time. The weirdest part about this is that she didn't even need to appear in court for her hearing. Her attorney, Bill Haney, was sent on her behalf instead. A judge handed her a 120-day jail sentence, but said that she wouldn't have to serve time if she just completed a 30-day treatment program. Along with that, she also had to follow the terms of a three-year probation, but never really saw any jail time for attacking that police officer. In number four, Matthew Perry. Getting back to Matthew Perry, though, since that Friends reunion show, Matthew Perry has never looked more unrecognizable. In the past, Matthew has admitted openly that he has struggles with addiction, and fans recently revealed fears that he may be using again. In May of 2021, Matthew sat down with his friend's co-stars for an interview with People Magazine. However, fans pointed out that he didn't seem to be responding to the questions in his usual comedic tone. Instead, they suggested that he was slurring his speech and even nodding off at one point. In a YouTube comment, one person writes, I know we are all sad about Matthew, but let's remember he has suffered a lot of health-related issues and he has struggled with addiction. Let's all be kind and polite and remember all the funny moments he gave us through his role as Chandler. Thank you. In at number three, Angus Jones. Angus Jones is perhaps best known for playing Jake Harper in the CBS sitcom Two and a Half Men, for which he won two Young Artist Awards and a TV Land Award. The show was the most popular sitcom in the US with an average audience of around 15 million people. By 2010, he was the highest paid child star in television at 17 years old. By 2012, though, Jones had turned 18 and really felt awkward with the new adult storylines that he was doing for the show. As a result of growing up, the writers could no longer give him childish lines and innocent mannerisms that Jake was so well known for. By November of 2012, Angus said that he had been baptized and no longer wanted to appear on the show anymore. He even went as far as saying that the show was filth and thus conflicted with his newfound religious views. In at number two, Jennifer Grey. After her starring role in the movie Dirty Dancing, Jennifer Grey was completely unaware of how famous she was about to become. The movie didn't perform well at award ceremonies, but it became widely popularized for certain scenes and lines. Jennifer decided to have a bit of cosmetic work done following the success of the film. This, however, turned into the now infamous nose job from hell. Grey told The Mirror, I went into the operating room of celebrity and came out anonymous. The nose job had altered her appearance just enough that even fans of the film didn't recognize her anymore. In at 10, Ezra Miller. Oh boy, 
what a way to start off this list. Sure, you may recognize the face, but in 2022, Ezra Miller is seemingly a completely different person. From perks of being a wallflower to now, oh my god, they've seemingly been replaced by a clone. After reports came of Ezra seemingly turning an Airbnb in Iceland into what one woman compared to a commune during the filming of Fantastic Beasts The Secrets of Dumbledore, things only got more insane from there. A few months later, a disturbing video surfaced showing Miller choking a woman and throwing her to the ground. Variety then confirmed the location of the altercation and employees of the bar identified the one in the video as Miller. And the video made the rounds on the internet and oh boy. While the original tweet has been deleted, nothing you post on the internet ever goes away. Then nearly a year later, Miller was arrested in Hawaii and charged with disorderly conduct and harassment due to a confrontation with patrons at a local bar that turned physical. And with the hype that had built around the Flash solo film and the Snyder Cut, with the Crisis on Infinite Earths cameo on the CW Arrowverse, this was definitely something horrifying to see. Especially after the couple that bailed Miller out of jail then filed a restraining order against them a couple days later. In at 9, Rebel Wilson, known mostly for her role as Fat Amy in Pitch Perfect and Pitch Perfect 2, seems to be an entirely new person as of 2022. Starting what she called her year of health in 2020, Wilson would be unrecognizable to anyone who hadn't followed that journey. Since 2020, Wilson has lost 77 pounds and has openly talked about not only her diet, journey, and body positivity, but she also mentions how helpful it was to go on walks several times a week. She of course threw her own brand of comedy into this journey with a video working out using water bottles, which I personally find very compelling, but this is still a massive change over just two years. She mentioned how she had to remind herself that things take time, saying, quote, I should take it a bit easier on myself and just do it gently and do it lightly. So in 2020, I lost weight, but very, very gradually. Sometimes I kicked things up a notch with some workouts and went hard, but the majority of the work for the year was just doing things like walking for an hour. And while, of course, the same method won't yield the same results for everyone, hopefully her journey can help you to continue or start your own. Also, if you guys like this kind of video, be sure you hit subscribe, alright? It's not me all the time, I promise. I'm just helping out. Just, just do it. In at 8, Jake Short. Okay, I knew Jake Short as Fletcher from Ant Farm, but after scrolling through TikTok, I stumbled upon a clip from a podcast hosted by who I recognized as Gabe Duncan, Bradley Perry. Checking the comments, I noticed a lot of people mentioning the other host as well, who I didn't really recognize, but kind of thought I knew them in my head. And they kept referencing Mighty Med, which was a show that ran on the Disney Channel from 2013 to 2015. So I looked it up to see who the other guy was, and that's when it clicked that it was Fletcher Quinby from Ant Farm. The real name, Jake Short. This was like an insane revelation for me and something that I never expected, which is why I feel the need to put it on this list, okay? Because this had me gobsmacked. I, I get that it's been 10 years, okay? But, but the beard that he had in the clip and, and the hair and then him having an insane growth spurt. The last time I remember seeing Jake on screen was in Ant Farm, whereas like we saw Bradley age during Good Luck Charlie's run, okay? So it was just, it was an insane shock that actually blew my mind. So yeah, if you didn't know, now you do. And, and hopefully it's not just just me who was blindsided. And it's 7 Adele. The singer released her first album in 2008 when she was 19 years old, but now at 30 she has a new album and is about 100 pounds lighter. That and her decision to ditch the dark hair and bangs that she was sporting in the beginning has left Adele unrecognizable. Following two slip discs and a c-section, the singer wanted to focus on feeling stronger both mentally and physically. Her personal trainer shared that she got really turned towards focusing on her movement, and especially strength training. So focused on that that she started doubling sessions. She told Oprah, I'm actually an athlete, I'm not even boasting. She also shared that she is a talented boxer and has a killer left hook. There were rumors that she was following a restrictive diet but immediately shut them down. A big leading factor into her journey is her breakup with her husband and becoming a single mother. And if you didn't really follow her aside from maybe her music, I'm sure that this would have come as even more of a shock like it did with me. I don't really listen to music, so yeah, I wasn't even following the music, and then, yeah, hopefully you get it. And it's six, Matthew Lewis. Matthew once told the big issue that he had to wear a fat suit and false teeth and stuff to stick my ears out in order to portray Neville Longbottom in the Harry Potter series. And it's been reported that Matthew's character was either based on or the basis for the term Longbottoming, which is detailed by Urban Dictionary as, quote, the sometimes slow, sometimes overnight, always surprising transformation of someone, usually a man, from 
decidedly unattractive to hot as hell. I'm pretty sure that's what the character's name was based on and not the other way around. But either way, Q Matthew playing Neville in the Harry Potter film franchise. Which afterwards he had a major glow up that surprised everyone, with the majority of people agreeing that he got even more attractive after the series despite the character also having a glow up within the context of the films. But given that according to most studies I believe men reach their prime around their 40s or 50s, this would be understandable. Since Lewis has gotten closer to this range after the movies, people would see him as more attractive and um, experienced. This is also not referring to someone's physical prime uh, or the prime that is typically associated with sports. I think you can understand what I'm saying. <laughs> Halfway through in at number 5, Macaulay Culkin. Of course known for his iconic role in Home Alone and Home Alone 2 Lost in New York, Macaulay Culkin is commonly regarded as one of the most successful child actors of the 90s. After retiring from acting at the age of 14, he explained the decision saying he was being seriously exploited by his father. One of the most shocking pictures of Culkin though made the rounds back in 2012. And was often one of the featured images in articles talking about child actors and the toll that it takes, along with many articles focused on people whose lives got destroyed, or for the majority of the time, articles talking about celebrities who destroyed their own lives. But if you put the photos of 2012 Macaulay next to 2022 Macaulay, you may know who it is just based on how iconic he is, but you'd think that they were from two different worlds. Like when I saw those pictures back in 2012, I was upset, alright? I had, I had hoped that he would be able to get out of that situation. And then he joined Smosh for a try not to laugh video back in 2019 and it was like night and day. In it for Jared Leto. Jared Leto is known for his unbelievable transformation abilities and he does it constantly like with his role for Paolo Gucci in Ridley Scott's true crime drama House of Gucci. In that role he wears a bald head, facial prosthetics, and flashy clothes because you know the, he's a luxury brand's former design chief. You get the idea alright but this transformation was so shocking that his co-stars didn't even recognize him the first day on set. Apparently Al Pacino had no idea who Leto was. Leto said in an interview, quote, The first day I showed up on set in character, I went over to Al Pacino and I say hello to him and he kind of brushed me off. You could tell that he couldn't wait to get away from me. But then, someone told him it was Leto and he was shocked with the transformation. When asked how long the hair and makeup would take every day, Leto said the physical part of it was about 6 hours in the morning and about an hour at night. Which is insane. But to be fair for the live action Grinch film, Jim Carrey had to complete CIA torture endurance training to get through that makeup process. So I guess you could say when Leto gets in the chair, it's Morbin time. Getting close to the end, in number three, Carrot Top. If you look at Carrot Top then and now, your mind will be absolutely blown, okay? It's crazy what this 56 year old comedian looks like now. From looking like a ginger Napoleon dynamite character to now looking like the star of Chucky, I'm not child's playing around, there are drastic differences between what seems to be his stages. Like basically he's the Machop of humans, okay? I can't wait to see him grow another two arms. It's so drastic that many people believe that he's gone through plastic surgery. So, I mean, even saying several specifically for his face. It's like the whole Zac Efron jaw thing but for comedians. Of course I'm, I'm saying all this is a joke because well he's a comedian. It makes sense in the context. But you're lying if you say that Carrot Top looks the same. Okay? The only thing that's similar is the hair. Without it you would have no idea who he was. But ultimately in at number two Seth Rogen. Seth Rogen is another comedian and actor who has had multiple stages I guess is the best way to describe it. In two years he went from looking like himself and neighbors from 2014 to looking like a hot dog and sausage party. That's a, that's a joke because it was animated. And now, come 2023, he's going to look like a gorilla named after a donkey. Again, another joke about animation, but also, why is a gorilla named donkey? That seems annoying. Without the beard though, Seth actually looks like a completely different person, which we could see at the Emmys back in 2021. And before that he went on his own weight loss journey which was shocking to many, with multiple sites stating that he lost 30 pounds in 10 weeks. And while some actors do have drastic changes for roles, take Christian Bale for instance, this was still a shock to many. Plus, again, without the beard he looks like a totally different person, I am standing by that statement. There's not that drastic of a change like there was with Jonah Hill, however there is definitely a noticeable difference that can make you forget who you're looking at. And finally, in at number one, Kelly Osbourne. Having famous parents like Ozzy and Sharon Osbourne, you're bound to grow up with a giant light focused on you. Some would say a spotlight. Which means the whole world can watch you go through your most awkward phases. We love that, right? 
Yeah, no. When we saw her in the early 2000s, the Osbournes on the red carpet, she was with her parents and they were usually sporting very grungy punk rock mixed with kind of a girly style out there. I don't know, I don't get it. I'm not a fashion guy. Obviously, I'm wearing a sweater. Often sporting dark eye makeup and short black hair. She had never looked more like her mother, but now Kelly has gone through quite the transformation. 20 years since the family show first aired, she's now rocking lilac colored hair and has shed quite a bit of weight. She struggled quite a lot growing up with substance and mental illness, but she has since sobered up and openly shared various aspects of her life. Osborne lost 38 kilograms and said that the surgery was far from a quick fix and it required a lifestyle change. And if you look at her from her time on the show to now, you would never know it's the same person, okay? And at, le at least, like, yeah, at least you don't have tiny glasses, right? Because, like, I don't get that. Why are they so small? As someone who needs glasses to read, I don't understand it. Number 10, Kanye West. After making a slew of anti-Semitic statements on various platforms, the rapper has gone through a mass cancellation and has been dropped by just about every single brand he's ever worked with. Kanye has been criticized in the past for his questionable choice of words, but the backlash against him reached an all-time high when he posted a tweet saying that he was going to go death con 3 on Jewish people. Ever since that moment, his anti-Semitic rhetoric has only seemed to escalate regardless of the consequences. He was locked out of his Twitter and Instagram accounts and doors started closing on him left and right. He was kicked out of his bank, JP Morgan Chase, abandoned by Vogue, Balenciaga and Gap, not to mention his major Hollywood talent agency, CAA. Eventually, he even lost his lucrative partnership with Adidas. The German sports brand called his remarks unacceptable, hateful and dangerous and said that they violated the company's values of diversity and inclusion, mutual respect and fairness. As a result, they ended all production of items under the Yeezy brand and stopped all payments to Kanye and his companies. In fact, his cancellation was so extensive that Kanye claimed he lost $2 billion in one day, and he ended up losing his position in Forbes magazine's list of billionaires. They estimated that the loss of the Adidas partnership has cut its net worth from $1.5 billion to $400 million. Sadly though, Kanye still shows no signs of remorse for his actions. Number 9, James Corden. The late night host received a chorus of criticism after he was exposed for being rude to waitstaff. His mean-spirited behavior has long been rumored around Hollywood, but it was never confirmed, that is, until the owner of a high-end New York City restaurant made a viral Instagram post, blasting him for his horrible behavior towards staff. Keith McNally owns a restaurant called Balthazar, and he said that Corden was the worst customer to his servers since the restaurant opened 25 years ago. He called him a tiny credin of a man and claimed in one instance, Corden demanded two free rounds of drinks for him and his friends after he presented a hair that was found on his food and said, get us another round of drinks this second. Also take care of all of our drinks so far. This way I won't write any nasty reviews on Yelp. On another occasion, he is said to have flipped out when an egg yolk omelet that his wife ordered was found to have a little egg white in it. He allegedly went ballistic and started tearing into the waiter, saying, maybe I should go into the kitchen and cook the omelette myself. According to the owner, James was so awful that he felt compelled to out him publicly and ban him from the restaurant entirely, something that is very rarely done in high-end establishments. For his part, Corden did apologize and he was eventually allowed back into the restaurant, but his squeaky clean reputation as a lovable Brit is now ruined forever. Number eight, Ned Fulmer. The incident went crazy when a video started circulating on social media of Ned Fulmer from the Try Guys kissing his employee Alex Herring at a New York City bar. Alex was one of the most well-known employees of the company and worked under Ned as the associate producer. But if that wasn't bad enough, she was engaged to her fiance Will Thayer at the time and the couple had been together for 11 years. So there was betrayal on both sides of the equation. But what made the scandal really insane was that Ned was known as a super devoted husband and a certified wife guy who loved to gush over Ariel in almost every video. He eventually became famous for it and made it into his whole brand. The man even co-authored a cookbook with her as well as a parenting podcast called Baby Steps. Just two days after the news broke out, the Try Guys announced on Instagram that Ned had been officially fired. After the post, Ned took to his own Instagram, confirming that yes, he had actually cheated on his wife. He said, family should have always been my priority, but I lost focus and had a consensual workplace relationship. 
relationship, but nothing he could have said at that point would have won back his audience because the contrast between his on-screen image and reality was just too profound. His cheating controversy has been compared to that of John Mulaney, but realistically, Ned's reputational fall from grace was swifter than any in recent memory. Number 7. TJ Holmes and Amy Roback Just recently, the two anchors of Good Morning America became embroiled in a crazy cheating scandal. Intense speculation had been swirling around the nature of their off-screen relationship after damning evidence of a workplace affair surfaced on social media. According to an extensive Page Six report, Holmes and Roback started secretly seeing each other in March this year, which is around the same time that they started training together for the New York City Half Marathon. Shocking photos that surfaced online of the pair showed them walking around upstate New York looking very cozy, and at one point even holding hands. Another set of photos taken in the weeks before Thanksgiving exposes that they went on a secret getaway to a remote cottage, and pictures were snapped of Holmes grabbing Roback's butt as she leaned into the trunk of a car. Since the story broke, the anchors have been taken off the air. ABC News President Kim Godwin announced during an internal call that they would no longer be hosting their daily 1pm show. Godwin told staffers that the affair had become too much of an internal and external distraction. She said, After a lot of thought, I am taking Amy and TJ off the air as we figure this out, explaining that while the affair was not a violation of company policy, the decision was necessary for the Good Morning America brand as a whole. Number 6. Bill Murray Back in April, the actor was accused of inappropriate behavior on the set of Aziz Ansari's film Being Mortal. Then a few months later, a bombshell report from Puck News came out, alleging that he agreed to pay a hundred thousand dollars as a settlement to a much younger crew member who claimed that he kissed her without her consent and even straddled her. The incident took place in front of witnesses as the allegations were backed up by a second staffer who saw what had happened. As a result, Disney shut down production of the movie and there's still no indication as to whether or not it will ever be completed. When the story broke, Murray immediately went on the defensive and claimed that he believed the woman had been flirting with him. Speaking on CNBC, he gave his side of the story and said it was all down to a different of opinion. Quote, I did something I thought was funny, and it wasn't taken that way. It's been quite an education for me. The world's different than it was when I was a little kid. Things change, times change. But by that point, several other celebrities had already come forward with their own allegations against him. Most notably, Murray's former co-star Gina Davis claimed that he screamed at her in front of hundreds of people while they were filming the 1990 comedy Quick Change. She said that he repeatedly tried using a back massager on her in spite of her refusals. In her memoir, she wrote, I said no multiple times, but he wouldn't relent. I realized with a profound sadness that I didn't yet have the ability to withstand his onslaught or to simply walk out. So with all the accusations now piling up against him, it's clear that Bill Murray has been exhibiting inappropriate behavior for several years. Number 5. Blueface The rapper was arrested this month on an attempted charge, stemming from an incident involving firearms. The artist, whose real name is Jonathan Porter, was booked into the Clark County Detention Center in Las Vegas. According to a police statement, he was arrested on warrants for attempted with a deadly weapon and discharging a firearm at slash into an occupied structure. As a result, a $50,000 bond was set during his initial court appearance, and a preliminary hearing is scheduled for January next year. But this news is only the latest addition to the rapper's bizarre antics, and further evidence that he's on a downward spiral. Blueface rose to fame in 2018, after several of his songs went viral and inspired various memes, all because of his high-pitched voice. Many social media users compared him to the cartoon character Courage the Cowardly Dog. In July of 2018, the rapper officially became a household name following the release of his hit track Tatiana, which would reach number 8 on the Billboard Hot 100, and later he would go on to release his debut studio album Find the Beat. But the fact is that he has really struggled to recapture the initial success that he saw in 2018 and 2019, when he was still fresh on the scene. With his music career on the decline, Blueface has since explored other avenues, like reality TV and OnlyFans, but these days the main reason he's been making headlines is for getting into physical altercations in public with his girlfriend Krishan Brock. So all in all, the future of his rap career has certainly been called into question. Number 4. Alex Jones The disgraced far-right conspiracy theorist was sued for claiming one of America's deadliest school massacres was a hoax. Jones founded the controversial InfoWars website and talk show, where he argued for years that the 2012 Sandy Hook massacre was a staged government plot to take firearms away from Americans, insisting that no one really died from the attack because it 
never happened. He even called the parents of the 20 victims crisis actors and argued that some of them never actually existed. As a result, the families of the victims claimed that his lies led to years of death threats, intimidation, and other forms of attacks from his followers, making their lives a living hell. Jones was eventually taken to court for defamation, and after a highly publicized trial, he was ordered in two judgments to pay a combined total of nearly $1.5 billion in damages, all to the families of the victims. In fact, the week-long trial included some truly shocking moments, like on the last day of testimony, where Jones's lawyer accidentally handed over the entire contents of his phone to the prosecution, revealing the extent of his lies. He has since filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy protection at a court in Houston, claiming that he has less than $2 million to his name and won't be able to pay such high amounts. Funnily enough, his legal saga is still not over, as he has a third defamation trial coming up, but he's already been banned from Facebook, Apple, YouTube, and Spotify. Spotify. Number 3. Sam Bankman Freed Just a few weeks ago, he was the impressively young crypto billionaire that everyone wanted to be. At 25 years old, Sam founded one of the biggest cryptocurrency exchanges in the world and became a celebrated philanthropist worth around $16 billion. He was praised as a certified genius who could be on a Zoom call with investors and play video games in another tab. But by mid-November, he found himself at the center of a colossal scandal that left his empire and his image in ruins. So what caused his downfall? To sum it up, it was a deception of epic proportions. According to a report from the Wall Street Journal, he is said to have illegally taken about $10 billion of his customers' money, all to put into his trading firm, Alameda Research. On the surface, FTX appeared to be thriving, as in the past year, it made several high-profile acquisitions and bailed out other failing crypto companies. But in reality, it was actually drowning in debt, with billions of dollars missing in customer funds. According to several news outlets, the DOD Jay and the SEC are now actively investigating FTX, and Sam's friends in crypto and various political circles have already distanced themselves from him in the wake of the scandal. It wasn't long before he resigned from the company altogether, as it collapsed from a surge in customers all trying to withdraw their funds, only to hit a brick wall. He since filed for bankruptcy and is now worth close to nothing. Number 2. Ezra Miller Since 2019, the actor has been involved in a growing list of controversies, many of those incidents involving some form of violence against women and inappropriate behavior towards those that are underage. But stories of Ezra's unraveling public persona really came to a head this year after a string of arrests in Hawaii seemed to set off a chain reaction. Aside from that, there were also two protective orders filed against them, one from the parents of a North Dakota teen who publicly accused Ezra of physically and emotionally harming their daughter, as well as brainwashing and other cult-like behavior. Then in early August this year, the actor was charged with felony burglary in Vermont and accused of taking several bottles of alcohol from an unoccupied residence. As a result, Ezra is reportedly facing a maximum of 26 years behind bars, as well as over $2,000 in fines if found guilty. With the star of their new $200 million Flash movie buried in legal battles, at one point, Warner Brothers and DC were considering replacing them. However, we now know this will not go ahead, likely because most of the film has already been shot and is now in post-production. And from a financial perspective, they've likely discovered that it would just be too expensive to replace the lead role. But the decision to keep Ezra in the DCEU was a controversial one and has been met with so much pushback that it doesn't seem like they'll be able to secure any more work after the movie comes out. And coming in at number one, Fred Savage. The actor who starred in the hint TV series The Wonder Years from 1988 to 1993 was fired from serving as a director and executive producer of the reboot in May this year. At the time, a spokesperson for 20th Television released a statement saying, recently we were made aware of allegations of inappropriate appropriate conduct by Fred Savage, and as is the policy, an investigation was launched. Upon its completion, the decision was made to terminate his employment as an executive producer and director of The Wonder Years. So what happened exactly? Well, six female crew members came forward alleging that Fred and a much younger woman on set had a strange relationship that made them all uneasy. They also claimed that his conduct on set included yelling and screaming at staffers and one attack of a former crew member. The woman filed a complaint to Disney and spoke to an HR executive about their concerns in February, and an investigation was started immediately and Fred was subsequently barred from set. For his part, the actor denied the allegations in a statement to NBC News, saying, Since I was six years old, I have worked on hundreds of sets with thousands of people and have always strived to contribute to an inclusive, safe and supportive work environment. It is devastating to learn that there are co-workers who feel that I have fallen short of these goals. He went on to claim that some incidents reported absolutely did not happen, but that any 
person who feels hurt or offended by his actions is one person too many. But clearly, that non-apology wasn't enough to restore his reputation, and he'll likely have trouble getting back on a film set of any kind. At number 10, Acacia Kersey. Getting her start on Tumblr almost a decade ago, Kersey has accumulated quite the list of controversies. She's been called out for racism, mistreatment of her pets, stealing other people's work, and even neglecting her children. Acacia has two daughters, Brinley and Rosemary, or Rosie. Now Rosie has a medical condition that affects her heart, and in watching her family vlogs, people have pointed out some unacceptable behavior from Acacia. There have been clips of Rosie unattended on the floor, unclipped nails, and with an unsanitary tube in her nose due to it not being washed after a doctor's visit. Acacia and her husband even took their daughters camping in the woods just days after Rosie had a big operation instead of keeping her home and resting. I could go on and on, but the most recent thing that really made people ditch Acacia is when she stole from another creator. Kersey announced that she was going to start selling her own presets, which are filters you can use for photos, after her own Instagram was receiving praise. She released a pack of multiple presets, but ended up taking it down just the next day. Apparently, small business owner Ash of Cherry Photo Club had confronted Acacia, accusing her of stealing her photo presets and presenting a lot of proof. Acacia did apologize, but customers wanted their money back. This only drove her reputation further into the ground because she said she'd already spent the money and couldn't give refunds. Acacia hustled selling homemade Mickey Mouse ears and flipping furniture, which eventually got her the money for the refunds. After that, she deleted her entire Instagram except for one photo, proving the refunds were received and left the internet. That was until a few weeks ago when she returned. Apparently now she's divorced and pregnant again. Will she have any supporters to come back to, or are her haters just waiting to see what she does next? Number 9. Gabby Hanna After an eventful year online full of discoveries, spiritual breakthroughs, rants, spiritual breakdowns, neck tattoos, and even claiming to be God at one point, Gabby Hanna has taken the advice of viewers and gotten some help. Despite her recent switch, I know there are a lot of people who will just not be returning to the Gabby Hanna fandom. The former Vine star and YouTuber had fans concerned for her well-being and mental health throughout this year due to her concerning activity and content on TikTok. Hannah at one point even posted at least 200 videos within a few days on the app. During her frequent posting, she would discuss her newfound insights on religion, even claiming to being the second coming of Christ at one point, filmed what seemed to be a possible break-in, and concerned fans to the point where the LAPD were called to her house multiple times. Hannah's erratic behavior was out of the blue for her, almost making a complete 180 from her prior promotional content for her music. Gabby would make videos of her dancing, reciting poetry, singing in the tub, and would even post things that led viewers to believe she may attempt to take her own life. Gabby referred to God as daddy for a while and even said he was the one in charge of her socials. Basically, it was hard to watch, but the more fans worried, the more she would yell about how she was fine, so many of them left. Now, recently, Hannah has returned to the platform, seemingly back to a better mental state, apologizing for and explaining her behavior, but for a lot of people, I think the damage has already been done. Number 8. Ruby Frank She came to YouTube fame with her family on their channel called 8 Passengers. Throughout their time on the platform, they've shared their day to day lives, including things that viewers saw as a red flag. The way Ruby and her husband Kevin would show uncomfortable private moments of their kids, like when they were being punished, raised concerns, but the actual punishments themselves were even worse. Gradually, people began noticing and speaking out about the parents' harmful behavior towards their six children, and noticed that Ruby especially was very strict with them. One incident that really shocked people online was when they took away their son's bed for seven months as punishment. Over the years of terrible treatment towards their children, viewers have warned Ruby and Kevin that once their kids move out for college, they'll never look back. Flash forward to now, and their oldest daughter, Sherry, did just that. After much speculation about Sherry's relationship with her parents, she finally spoke out and confirmed that she has no relationship with her mother or father. She did mention she hoped for a reunion sooner than later, but as of now, things aren't good. Now fans are even more done with Ruby as she takes on a new business venture called Connections, where she gives parenting advice for a price. Clearly people think she is the last woman who should be giving parenting advice and are so done with her behavior. Even Ruby's sister has said that Connections has torn them apart, trashing Connections, and in a year, Ruby went from 8 passengers to 1. At number 7, Jeffree Star Despite him being cancelled before, Star continues to be shut down even when keeping things low key. Star was involved in some pretty heated drama on YouTube with the beauty community a couple years back. 
That combined with his very problematic choice in language back in the day resurfacing turned a lot of people off of him. Starr decided to sell his mansion in California and move to Wyoming where he lives on a yak farm. Yes, Jeffrey was pretty much cancelled before, but for the fans he still had, he posted content of his new life. Starr made countless videos of and with his yaks, showing them off to fans. Then earlier this year, he shocked fans when he announced that he would be starting to sell the yaks meat. Now, of course, having a farm and selling meat is nothing to cancel someone over. I definitely have no problem with that. What fans were upset over is the fact that he lied about it. Prior to selling the meat, Jeffrey spoke of the animals as though he wouldn't be using them for that reason. Star has spoken a lot over the past year about his love for yak farming, saying he's in love with their spirit, calling his 40 plus animals part of his family. In September of last year, Jeffrey filed a trademark line for yak related products, including yarn, treats, clothing, and more. Following the report coming out, Jeffrey himself posted an Instagram story claiming his yaks were just for petting and loving. This is why fans were upset when they heard about the meat being sold. It's clear Star's plan to farm, harvest, and sell meat from his yaks has likely been in the works for years. Number 6 Chef Veronica Shaw Widely known as Chef P, she's the creator of the highly criticized viral pink sauce. Amassing millions of views across TikTok related to reviews, speculation, and explanations, the pink sauce creator was met with scandal after advertising and distributing her product primarily through social media. It's clear from people who did buy and received the pink sauce that there were a lot of things that were overlooked, and when it comes to selling a food product, nothing can be overlooked. The sauce that was often cited as peptabismal like in color and texture promises a sweet, spicy, and tangy flavor. That being said, I think most customers only experience the tangy part in the worst way possible. According to the website, the sauce is made from dragon fruit, honey, chili peppers, garlic, and sunflower oil. The controversy really began when the production method of the product was questioned. Several customers who received pink sauce reported a rancid scent, distended bottles, or already exploded bottles upon receiving it. On top of that, a typo on the nutrition label stated 444 servings per container when it should have been 30. This prompted a lot of backlash. At Kayla said it on Twitter wrote, as a food scientist, do not buy that pink sauce. People are receiving bloated bottles, meaning one of two things, there's a bacterial reaction occurring, in brackets, gas production, and or there are zero preservatives. Chef P defended her product, saying she's fixing the issues and that it's a small business with things moving really fast. At this point, the initial excitement of the sauce has worn off and I know people don't play when it comes to food safety. I think the pink sauce train has left the station. At number 5, Nikocado Avocado Another YouTuber who's used to being called out for his problematic behavior is at it once again. With every scandal, people are only becoming less and less interested to see what the shocking YouTuber will come out with next. Nick Perry is a YouTuber known for his extreme eating videos and the insane transformation he's gone through since the beginning of his time online. He's been involved in many controversies over the 8 years he's been a YouTuber. Perry clearly pulls out the shock value for his videos, but as he only gets more extreme, his subscribers in the YouTube community are concerned. Nick started out his time on YouTube as an aspiring musician and vegan vlogger. Now he only posts shocking eating videos, including one where he cries, shaving his head over fried eggs and ramen noodles. In the past few years, Nick has made a lot of videos about feuds he's been in with other creators, videos of him and his ex-husband Orlin physically and verbally fighting, and videos where he's expressed concern for his health despite making no changes. This year Nick has been posting more of the same concerning and often jarring content. I think most of his loyal fans are finally starting to question if their support is making things worse. Especially when it comes to his seemingly declining health, fans are tuning out of the extreme eating videos more and more. One fan even commented on a recent video of his, I wish Nick would worry more about his health than his views. At number 4, Katherine McBroom. Two years after launching her own skincare brand, 1212 Gateway, the influencer was dropped by the brand altogether. To give you some background, in 2021, her former business partner, TBL Cosmetics, sued her for $30 million. She lost the lawsuit, and last February, she was ordered to pay $763,000. There were many reasons why she was taken to court, but most of them came down to dishonesty, unprofessional conduct, and bad business practices. From the time it was launched, her company has been hit by wave after wave of negative reviews, and the beauty community straight up labeled the whole brand as a scam. There were complaints of empty product containers, disheveled packaging, and some people claimed that they were charged extra for a cancelled
take order. Other claims that the product was so harsh it even burned their faces. Catherine was just supposed to be the face of the 1212 gateway and promote it on social media, while TBL would take care of management and business operations. But it wasn't long before TBL realized that Catherine was literally trying to take over their company, with them accusing her of organizing a coup against TBL as well as conspiring with her family and friends to stage a takeover of management. The company also claimed that she changed the passwords to their social media accounts, including their email, website, and Shopify. Catherine of course denied all their allegations, but her antics landed her in some serious hot water. She can deny all she wants, but people stay skeptical due to her and husband Austin Broom's history of not living up to expectations and ultimately scamming their fans. At number 3, Austin McBroom. Well, if I'm going to include Catherine, I may as well throw Austin in here too. The McBrooms are the masterminds behind the family channel called The Ace Family. At this point, I think the only reason they're still getting views on YouTube from their 18 million subscribers is due to them being a family channel, meaning their audience is quite young. In terms of an audience over age of 12, I'm not sure they exist because I think this year alone they got into at least 4 different scandals. The one I will touch on in this video is Ace Fest. McBroom decided that on July 9th earlier this year they were going to be throwing an event called Ace Fest. Many who attended this extremely hyped up and advertised event were disappointed with promises broken, false advertisement, long lines, overpriced food, and blistering heat. The couple have over 18 million subscribers, mostly featuring their children on their channel, but they announced that at the end of 2022 they were quitting YouTube to travel. But before they go, they wanted to throw this festival. McBroom described the event as Disneyland meets Coachella, which it ended up being the furthest thing from. Prices for their event were about $100 per ticket if you bought a family bundle, but $121 if purchased solo. For context, the price of a one day pass to Disneyland starts at $104. Basically, the verdict was people were expecting more from the way they hyped up the event and felt ripped off. It was described as an overpriced carnival and once again the family was accused of scamming their fans. Maybe leaving for 2023 would be the best for the Ace family. Number 2, Nikita Dragon. Last month the YouTuber was arrested after walking around naked at a Miami Beach hotel pool and causing a public disturbance. Police say when they got there, Nikita had been causing a disturbance for a long period of time and when they asked her to cut it out, she became irate and threw water on the hotel staffers. Then when the police and security went up to her room, she apparently opened the door after several knocks but ended up slamming the door in their faces. From that point on, things escalated very quickly. Nikita opened the door again and asked them, do you want more? She then swung at them with an open water bottle which spilled all over the cops. At that point, she was handcuffed and arrested. Although it does make sense that she would be punished for her actions, some of her fans have pointed out that nothing she did was that serious to warrant an arrest. They think there must be some other kind of hidden reason that she was taken to jail. From that point on, a video went viral of Nikita on social media which showed her in jail talking to a judge. She gets asked, do you have the money to post the bond? Nikita then looks uncertain and asks how much it is. And when she finds out it will come up to about $2,000, she said, I might have to check. When that video came out, one of her fans, a Florida based TikToker named Ivy Wyatt, came to her rescue and ended up paying her bond. Even though her time in custody was short lived, it's not the first time Nikita has done something messy online. She's been called out before for a number of reasons, but this last incident might need a little more than a notes app apology to win back her fans. And at number one, Ned Fulmer. Probably the most widely reported YouTuber cancellation of the year was Ned Fulmer of the Try Guys. Formed by the company BuzzFeed in 2014, the four guys, Zach, Keith, Eugene, and previously Ned, made the Try Guys into its own channel where they now have over 8 million subscribers. On September 25th, member Ned Fulmer was accused of cheating on his wife with one of the channel's employees. It started out as rumors in a popular Reddit thread, but fans took the group's silence as a sign they were wrong. Unfortunately, that was not the case. Photos came out of what appeared to be Fulmer making out with his employee, associate producer Alexandria Herring, who is engaged in New York City. At first, the allegations were hearsay as the photos were blurry. Then on September 27th, the Try Guys confirmed that Ned was no longer a part of the group in a statement posted to their socials. The post said, Ned is no longer working with the Try Guys. As a result of a thorough internal review, we do not see a path forward together. Now this was extra insane because not only was she engaged, she was his employee that he was cheating with. Ned himself is married, a fact he has built a large part of his personality around. He's the guy who loves his wife and kids so much it's all he talks about. Now Ned has even even been cut out of new videos recorded before the scandal, the merch campaign, and episodes of their Food Network show.